We are back, and we're talking to Dr. Rich Griffith, uh, and we're talking about the church and the realities of single parenting, a topic that I don't think it's talked about enough, and, and I thank you for sharing this with us. Um, I, I do want to ask, and you've talked about this a little bit, but is it possible for a nuclear family model and a permeable, permeable family model to exist together in a church, or are those just like, should they just be one and the same? No, I think it's essential that they both function together, right? Um, and we can't assume that all nuclear families are healthy and all permeable families are dysfunctional or vice versa, right? Uh, so the way I see it is sort of like intergenerational ministry, right? Which mm -hmm. is another place we got to go because we're losing so many young people because we don't have intergenerational ministry like we should. So I think um, just, so this is why I push, and I'm really trying to say this strongly, what I really want to hear everybody talk more, talk more about is, again, church as family. So that means it includes your nuclear family. It includes your permanent family. It includes your single people who aren't married, right? Mm -hmm. We can minister to each other just like serving, right? Serving in the church with different gifts, right? Nobody sits there and goes, oh, well, you're single, so you can't play the guitar or whatever <laughs> it is, right? So, uh, so it's the same concept of it doesn't matter what your life position is. Why are we so divided? The church is the most divided institution on Sunday morning in America because, you know, we ship children here, adults here, youth go here, and we do the same thing with singles or what, what are the leftovers group, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like, wow, what does that say, right? And again, that points to that idolatry, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we have to. I mean, single people need to see... Uh, married couples together, married couples need to see and raise their children to be okay with single people so we don't like give them the scarlet letter, right? I can't tell you in my church how many times people have tried to fix me up because, well, you're a pastor and you should be married, right? And, uh, you know, I don't know if I was too crazy or the ladies I dated was too crazy, but one way or the other, it just wasn't worth That's a whole other story. But the point being, I don't know why we have the scarlet letter syndrome, mm -hmm. so they've got to work together right? The church is the church is not divided. Shouldn't be. Oh, and by the way, I should mention this too. It's not just singles. What about grandparents now that are raising their grandchildren, right? Mm -hmm. That's a whole struggle. And it used to be, I don't mean to offend, but it used to be more of an urban problem, right? It's all over now. I'm a little yeah. country church where, you know, we've got two or three grandparents raising their children as their, their grandchildren, as their children. It's not fair to the grandchildren and it's not fair to the grandparents. And how is the church supporting them? This is why we have to have families come together. It doesn't matter what it's made up. Yeah, that, that's really good. Well, what are some steps that churches can take to begin to minister to all types of parents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a great question. And what I try and remind people all, uh, all the time is incremental. Just incremental steps, right? So uh, one of my college students got to introduce me, even though they probably don't do that, but uh, introduced me on my session today. And one of the things, we have this thing in our church now where I'm the youth pastor, and we have these owls, older, wiser, livelier saints. Don't call them seniors. I almost got really, really blasted for that, right? <laughs> but they're wonderful people. And so what we did is we said, let's start small. So we took our owls, and we had a dinner with our owls and our college interns, and we said, just match up. And the other thing I learned, too, discipleship scares people and mentoring scares people because they think they're not equipped, right? So I, I didn't call it that. I said, I want you guys to be encouragers of each other. And so what they do is the older people get with the younger people. They have dinner or they text each other. It's really cool to see them text each other. The older people are texting the younger people saying, I'm praying for you this week. So it's just small stuff, right? Maybe it's one of those things where we do family worship a little more intentionally and define church as family for, for that worship, right? Maybe it's we uh, spend our summer session or just a season uh, doing more uh, intergenerational, all kind of family, small groups. It doesn't have to be etched in stone and this is the way we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. You have to have affinity groups and you also have to have, you know, diversity groups too. Yeah. So I think it's just small steps. Don't try and turn the ship on one big swing. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to end on this because you talked about how if we're missing the boat on this. We're really missing out on half the families in the church. Right, right, right. I'm guessing that also means we're missing out on ministering to people outside the church. Oh, for sure. So how can this approach also help our churches reach the community that's outside the church? Well, I mean, simply being more aware and saying, hey, if we start doing a good job ministering to the others in our congregation and getting out of our... This is why I tell people, if you can't minister in empathy, I'm okay with a single dad of you ministering to me out of sympathy. But it is sure a lot better than apathy. Right, And so I'm saying if we could do that well in the church, here's what's going to happen. Single parents, grandparent parents, whatever the role is, they're going to be excited about the church that now they feel a part of, church as family. And they're going to tell their friends, their single parent friends, you really need to come to this church because they're meeting our needs. And that doesn't mean money. It's just emotional. Frankly, when I heard that we're not ready for that, 
it broke my heart mm. because it's sitting there basically saying, I don't matter. And I'm, I'm on church staff. So if we can do that well in our church, I think people outside the church will be drawn to it. You know, you, you lift up Christ, you lift up his kingdom, people are drawn to him. Mm-hmm.